So this is uh, going to, my presentation is going to focus on licensed lay ministry, discerning and growing in faith. And I want to give you sort of the context in which the Commission on Ministry is looking at um, lay ministry and licensed lay ministry. Um, we've just completed um, a, a presentation um, to uh, our, our leadership group uh, about um, a new, uh, a new process for licensed lay ministry. And I'm really pleased to present that to you today. So first things first, our gracious God calls us all to ministry through baptism, gives us gifts to use in uh, ministry and gives co us congregations as the place to discover and explore those uh, gifts. And so, um, we can begin at our parish level, where we learn to tell um, and to live into the Christian story. We learn to tell our own story, and we have an opportunity to explore using our gifts in ministry. So the parish is the primary place for formation. So your call and your gifts. My, my, favorite, um, my favorite quote when it comes to uh, uh, ministry and call is from Frederick Buechner. The place that God, that God calls you to is the place where your deepest gladness and the world's deepest hunger meet. Um, and so your gifts and and your call will change with new opportunities and experiences. And reflecting on your gifts and your call can help you identify your deepest gladness. Exploring your gifts can help identify the world's deepest hunger and find a place where those two match. So we're going to look at uh, two groups of licensed lay ministry. So, so the laity has um, a, a general call to, um, to minister through uh, baptism everywhere that they find themselves, at home, at work, um, wherever. Um, and in addition to that, uh, the canons of the church have uh, have. Uh, 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 put together uh, specific licensed lay ministries. And so these come from uh, to us from the canon. Um, and I want to note that all licensed lay ministers work under the authorized supervision of their priest or rector in their home parish. One other note, we're going to, you're going to see on the slide reference to the rector. Um, um, that, uh, that's kind of a placeholder for rector and the person in authority in your church. So if your church doesn't have a rector, there are ways that we are developing, the Commission on Ministry is developing to make sure that, you, that your church and your ministry don't just sort of fall through the cracks. So, and we'll, you know, the, we'll talk about that down the road. Um, so uh, group one is the easy group to deal with. Basically, we're going to be dealing with it in the same way we've dealt with it uh, for, for many, uh, many years, Eucharistic minister and Eucharistic visitor. Group two is the group that, uh, of ministries that have um, much more responsibility. Um, and, um, and so we have developed a more robust um, um, licensing program for that group. So let's take a look at group one ministry, uh, just to review. The Eucharistic minister is the lay person who administers the consecrated elements at the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. And the Eucharistic visitor is a lay person who brings and shares the consecrated elements 
with members of their faith community who are not um, in church, uh, perhaps because they are um, uh, for a whole variety of reasons. And when directed by clergy, Eucharistic visitors may um, bring the Eucharistic it may bring the Eucharist to people who are not members of their particular faith community. Okay, so we're gonna look at the process for, um, for group one first, Eucharistic minister, minister, Eucharistic visitor. So we start in the lower left uh, corner and uh, all of our processes begin with a, a discerning, a discussion where the rector and person um, um, sit down and, and uh, chat about a, a possible call. And this can be initiated either by the rector or by the person who feels a call. And we go to equipping. So in this case, if there's a deacon available, the deacon trains the person for this particular ministry. If there's no deacon, uh, a rector can do that. If there's no rector, um, the, the, the diocese will find someone to, um, to adequately train uh, you to do this. So discerning, the rector submits a letter of recommendation and, a for, and formation details to the bishop. Um, asking for licensing for this person. And then commissioning, the bishop grants a three-year license, renewal, uh, uh, a three-year license. Renewal requests uh, come from the rector and are due by June 30 of year three of the, uh, uh, for an August approval. And the final step is commissioning. This is something a little new. Um, the rector in the parish install the person in a celebratory liturgy of their choice, and uh, the person begins their ministry under the rector's supervision. And I, I said the, the final step, but it's really not the final step. There is a feedback loop. So um, uh, beginning uh, in the third year, um, the person and the rector uh, discuss relicensing and um, send the form back to um, the request back to the bishop and the bishop will sign a new uh, three year approval. One of the things that we are, uh, we, one of the things that we're changing uh, for this is that we are um, strongly, uh, I believe we are requiring um, people in this in these ministries um, to have um, uh, uh, safeguarding training. Um, and we are strongly, strongly recommending, especially for people who will be visiting people in their home, that, that you consider getting background checks and also for both cases that you do anti-racism training. Okay. Now we go to the, uh, the more challenging group, let's say. Um, licensed lay ministries uh, group two. Um, catechist is a lay person who prepares people for baptism, confirmation, reception, and reaffirmation of baptismal vows. Evangelist is a lay person who represents the good news of Jesus Christ in such a way that people are led to know Christ as savior and, and follow Christ's example in the fellowship of the church and the wider community. Pastoral leader uh, is a lay person who exercises pastoral or administrative responsibility in a faith community under special circumstances as defined by the bishop for the given context of the faith community. A lay preacher is a person who delivers homilies or sermons based on scripture text and um, relevant to the culture and the daily common life of the faith community. 
Worship leader is a lay person who regularly leads public worship. So those are the five uh, uh, ministries, lay ministries in group two. So our, our um, diagram is a little bit more complex for this and we hope it's not uh, too burdensome. We start in the lower left corner with discerning and it's the same kind of conversation between the person and the rector initiated by either party um, and then we go to equipping and this is the rest of this is um, is uh, a new uh, process that we're embarking on so with equipping the rector and the person in consultation with the Stevenson School for Ministry Dean, design a formation plan for licensing. And uh, the person also joins a free 10 week cohort group through the Stevenson School uh, with an option to con continue that group longer if they'd like. And this is where formation takes place. Step three is discerning. At the completion of that planned formation process, the rector and the person submits a letter of recommendation uh, with, de with formation details to the bishop and to a new group that the Commission on Ministry is, is going to uh, create called um, uh, a subcommittee of COM called Commission on Ministry for the Laity. That group reviews the submissions and makes a recommendation to the bishop. The bishop also directly gets that submission and recommendation um, and decides uh, to grant a three-year license. Um, renewal requests from the rector are due by June 30 of year three for August approval. Um, the, uh, the next step, uh, is that the rector and the parish install the person in a celebratory liturgy and the licensed lay minister begins their ministry under the rector's supervision. Step six, and this is um, a, an additional step from the, the graphic we just saw, is equipping, continual equipping. The rector and the licensed lay minister discuss and develop a continuing formation plan. And the licensed lay minister completes uh, the, the formation activities in that plan and sends uh, the completed list to the bishop each year in June, and then applies for a, um, a, a renewal of the license. And we go through that cycle. <laughs> so we are going to get um, this material. As I said, it's brand new. <laughs> We're going to get this material up on our website so that you will have not only the graphic, but the more detailed uh, text description of the steps. <laughs> 